Probably the most common aspect of working with nodes is programmatically loading nodes and viewing them in custom ways. In order to begin exploring the functions that we'll need in order to do that, we first need some content. So what I've done is downloaded a module called Devel, and Devel includes a number of developer utilities, one of which is a generation tool that will create some dummy content. So I've downloaded it from this URL, drupal.org slash project slash devel, and I've already installed it. What I'm going to do is go to configuration, development, and generate content. And what I'm going to do is just leave the settings as a default and click generate. And this will create 50 nodes. So if we go to our home page, what we'll see is a list of 50 random nodes with some lorem ipsum text. Okay, from here, we can start to actually work with the content. So in this first example, we're going to simply load a node and view it on a page that we've added via hook menu. So go ahead and jump to your build a module resource directory and copy the folder called stuff. This is a collection of two modules and paste it in your Drupal directory in your sites all modules custom directory. Okay, let's take a look at the contents real quick. This is the first time that we've used a module that includes a module inside of a module. And let's go ahead and take a look at how we're structuring this. We have our .module file here for our stuff module, but then we have an additional module that we've included in a modules directory called new stuff. This is the module that we'll use to demonstrate adding a new content type. Separating out the functionality of one module into separate modules makes sense if you anticipate users wanting to enable or disable certain aspects of the functionality. Another good use case is this one where we're adding a new node type. Typically, a module will take care of a single node type. So if we wanted to add multiple node types, we would likely want to add additional modules for each one. What we're going to do is start out with the stuff module and we're going to open up the dot module file and we're going to open up the steps folder which includes a structured step by step process of building our module and we're going to open up the first step which is called load and display single node. Go ahead and copy this code and paste it into your dot module file and save it. Now we've called this module stuff just to disambiguate it from some of the other words that are commonly referred to in the node API such as content or node because we just want to make sure that we're when we look at hooks and we look at function calls that we can easily distinguish between the module name and the name of the hook. This file is pretty simple. We have just two functions. The first is called stuff menu and this is simply an implementation of hook menu and we're using it to add a single page to the menu system called stuff. So we'll find it at the path stuff. We're giving it a title of node API examples, a page callback of stuff examples page, which is our function down here. And then we're just making sure that anybody can access this page by giving it an access callback of true. Okay. In our page, in this first example, what we're going to do is load a node. And we do that by using a function called node load. Node load takes as its first parameter a node ID and it returns a structured array that includes a lot of information about the node. That information can then get passed to another function called node view, which we're using right here, in order to convert that array into a render array format. So we can either pass it back straight as the render array for our menu callback down here, or we can add it to a more complex render array, for example if we have multiple nodes, which we'll look at in the next example. Let's go ahead and take a look at the structure of this node. Notice that I'm passing at the node ID 50. This is assuming that you're using a Drupal site 
that hasn't created any content yet. And so when we generated that content initially, we'll have node IDs from 1 to 50. If you already have some content, this will work as long as you have a node that has a node ID of 50. But if not, you may want to replace this out with a node ID that you know you have. Okay, what I'm going to do is set a breakpoint here. And we talk about breakpoints elsewhere in these videos. But the idea is that we're stopping the execution of this code right here. And we're using a debugger in order to observe the functions and the variables that have led up to this point and this current state of the variables. So we'll be able to look at this node object here after we load it. So we need to install our module first. So I'm going to go up to our modules page and scroll down to build a module section and go ahead and select the stuff node API examples module and click the save configuration button. Now we'll have a new page at stuff. Okay, so you see here we're viewing the content that's returned from our page callback and we haven't gone through this all yet so I'll wait to go through it. I'm going to start a debugging session which will then trigger the breakpoint that we just set in the code. And I'm going to jump back to the editor. So now Drupal has executed up until this point, and we're stopping right here. And now we can take a look at the node object. So here it is right here. I'm going to go ahead and expand it. If you scroll down, you'll see that there's a good bit of data here, but it's manageable. Let me just highlight a couple of these items. We have the VID, which is the version of this node the UID, which is the user that created it, a title. Let's go ahead and scroll down a little bit more. Here we have a body field, and inside of this body field is a subfield called UND, which is short for undefined. And if we had multiple languages for this Drupal install, and we were translating node content, there would be multiple items under this array, each with a short abbreviation of the language that it contains. So in this case, I don't have any translations on the site, so it's just UND. And here we'd have a variety of content. In this case, we just have a single item. And here's the value here. If you want to explore the node object, but you don't have a debugger, you can use PHP functions like verdump or printr. And the devel module, now that you have it installed, includes several utility functions to print out arrays very nicely in the browser. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and end this debugging session. And let's jump back to the code. Okay. So what we're doing here is creating a render array. And we go over render arrays in detail in the menu systems video. But basically, the render array is simply an array that contains content that will be rendered as HTML on the page. And we're using node view with the node object as the first parameter. And what this will do is create a render array from the node. We can also pass another parameter to node view that tells what view mode we're going to use. By default, it's full, which will display the entire node as well as certain other attributes. But we can also pass it a different view mode called teaser. And we can also add additional view modes through our module, and we'll go over that later. The teaser will be a shorter version of the content. It's what would typically display on a River of News style page that displays a list of the first couple paragraphs of a piece of content. And we're delineating between the full version and the teaser version with a title here called teaser mode. And then we're returning this as a render array. So we have three items that we're adding to the render array. Two of them are nodes. And then one of them is just a little markup to mark a space between the two. OK, let's jump back to the browser and take a look at the output. So here at the top, we have our full example. It's got a title and the content. And then we have the title that we added 
via the render array. And then we have the teaser version. And notice the teaser has the read more link at the bottom, whereas the full doesn't.